Namaskar and a warm welcome to all of you. Today's subject is signaling in RE area part 2. In this presentation, we will be discussing about feeding of signals. In part 1, we have dealt with the basics of uh, signaling. In part 2, we will be mainly dealing with the feeding of signals. To start with, the induced voltage in conductors, as we have seen in uh, part 1, is 95 volts per kilometer on double line sections and 116 volts per kilometer on single line sections. As we have already seen, only unscreened cables shall be used in RE area. In unscreened cables, even though earthing is not proper of uh, cables, earthing of uh, uh, cable armor is uh, not proper, still for all we should not have any unsafe condition in our signaling system. To ensure that we have to have some restrictions. There are two types of feeding, indirect feeding and direct feeding. Direct feeding means giving power supply 110 volts AC directly to the signal unit while indirect method is giving 110 volts AC either through remote feeding or local feeding. When I say remote feeding it means that the one power supply is going from relay room to the signal while when I say it is local feeding it means already 110 volts AC is taken in the bus bar and available at the local location bar of the concerned signal. And feeding of signal takes place with the 110 volts available at the location box in the near the signal. Now, this is a simple circuit which explains the uh, direct feeding of signals with 12 volts bulb. Here we have no, uh, as you see, this circuit is uh, not closed. It is, uh, let us say, there is a relay contact or a switch, and uh, this is our transformer 110 volts, oblique 12 volts. Here, let me be clear that presently we are not using these transformers. Previously, in signaling system, transformers were used. 110 volts is the primary input. 12 volts AC, 110 volts AC is the primary input while 12 volts AC was the output on the secondary side and with this 12 volts we used to have a, we used to connect a bulb. Presently we are using our LED units, LED signals. Yet the signaling system which was initially started with the calculation based on the transformer, the same system is still continuous. Here, let us say there is a distance of about 1 kilometer between the signal unit and our circuit. If for any reason the relay is not yet picked up, but both positive and negative supplies get earthed, then the circuit is closed. If the circuit is not closed, the signal will not glow. But if the circuit is closed because of any other reason also, or if there is some foreign feed on this and this conductors and both get earthed, then current is passed into it and our ECR is also likely to pick up. So if for instance here we get 21 volts, then this bulb will glow. If the voltage is full 110 volts, it will glow fully. But if it is only 21 volts, it will go. It will glow light, very small way. Here, direct feeding of signals. As I have told, if 110 volts is given, output will be 12 volts. But if the in, uh, input is 21 volts AC, some foreign feed has come, then 2.3 volts is the secondary output, and your bulb will glow. ECR may not pick up, but bulb will glow, which is unsafe. Hence, our signaling system will be such that the voltage on the primary side shall be less than 21 volts. The 
based on that direct feeding of signals that is without any modifications in the circuit it is 220 meters on double line section and 180 meters on single line section so what is this 220 meters and 180 meters how we have got this let us take an example on double line sections as you have already known that 95 volts is the induced voltage for 1 kilometer as we have seen the voltage permitted on the primary side is 21 volts so based on this it is 220 meters only so direct feeding of signals is up to 220 meters permitted if in this case any un foreign feed is available the bulb will not glow that is the reason it is 220 meters similarly in single line it is 180 meters going further direct feeding of signals means we are directly giving one terminal so supply from our relay room to the signal here in the relay room hr has picked up and the supply has come and picked up our signal our uh, bulb hg dg rg whatever it is here nowadays we are not having a transformer we are directly giving it to our led unit here there are no relays and the maximum distance permitted between our relay room and the signal is 220 meters on double line and 180 meters on single line. Now indirect feeding. If the distance is above the range of 220 meters on double line or 180 meters on single line, then we will go for indirect feeding. In indirect feeding, there are two methods that is remote feed method and local feed method. So remote feed method is used on all wayside station signals except distance signal in double distance signal integrity because the distance is very far off we have to use local method only. While local method used for automatic signaling and distance signals in double distant signaling territory. So local feed is used where the distance is more while remote feed is used when the distance is above 220 meters indirect feeding the remote feed method here you can see the difference with the relay room hr pickup we are picking up one relay hpr this is an ac immunized relay and after this hpr picked up in location 110 volts ac sent it from relay room through hpr front contact we are giving it to our current regulator are directly LED unit, integrated LED unit nowadays. Here ECR is available in the relay room. Uh, if HECR is in dropped condition, then your RECR will pick up. This is remote feed method where the supply is being fed from a remote location. Explaining the circuit, we can see here, let us say S26 signal, HR is picked up, with N26 HR pickup, our HPR relay picks up, this is an AC immunized relay. Here HR pickup, HXR pickup, HPR already picked up, as you have seen here, with HPR pickup, HG signal is glowing and HECR picks up when the bulb is glowing in the relay room. If HECR is in drop condition, RG will glow. So here again, ECRs are available in the relay room and feeding supply is also going from relay room to the location directly to the unit. In the, in the middle, we have controlling relays. This is also the same uh, circuit. I am going further. So, the length of DC circuits on rain relays with unscreened shall be restricted to. So, if the uh, type of relay used is QNA1, QNNA1, or QNA1K with AC immunity 1000 uh, volts, then maximum permissible length on single line is 2.1 kilometers and on double line it is 2.8 kilometers. Now, how we have got this 2.1 and 
8 kilometers let us discuss i'll discuss about double line 2.8 kilometers the maximum permissible induced voltage is restricted to 400 volts for human safety and factor of safety 1.5 has to be considered so here the maximum permissible induced voltage is restricted to 400 volts though ac humidity level is 1000 volts yet we are restricting it to 400 volts for human safety more than for we as ascent staff are trained to work up to 400 volts so induced ac voltage per kilometer is 95 volts for 400 volts ac immunity factor which is 400 by 95 it is 4.2 kilometers but factor of safety is again 1.5 we don't take full we will take a factor of safety as 1.5 for safety precautions so not 4.2 it shall be divided by 1.5 to get 2.8 kilometers so as i have told you non double line it is 2.8 kilometers that is how we have got this 2.8 kilometers the next method if the distance is above 2.8 kilometers say, let us say in double line then local feed method is used so from 220 to 2.8 kilometers double line we use indirect method with remote feeding if the distance is above 2.8 kilometers then local feed method is used so here local feed method what is the difference here you can see hr pickup and hpr pickup is available is at the location box while here we have to take 110 volts ac in a bus bar and keep it ready in the location signal location we will have 110 volts ac similarly 24 volts ac is also required for our circuitry so 110 volts ac is also required for our circuitry at the location so here hpr says this is locally fed and ecr is available at the location not in the real now let us see a circuit where re cutting and local feeding method is used here you can see this is your relay room your power supply 110 volts uh, ac is available here from here using a trans rectifier we have used uh, ac to dc supply 24 volts and dr which is already picked up we are sending supply to pick up dpr1 in re location the same system is again available here with 110 volts ac changing it to 24 volt 24 volt dc by using a trans rectifier yes as one distant dpr1 is now already picked up this 24 volt supply is going to pick up dpr2 at the location with dpr2 picking up at the location we are picking up dg circuit dg and decr is picked up this is our negative circuit and dg is picked up once dg is glowing and decr pick up this data we have to take it to the relay room that is with the help of ecprs here you can say again 24 volts uh, by providing a trans rectifier 110 volts ac which is available in the location is used to drop to 24 volts from here we are decr is picked up we are picking up decpr once DECPR is picked up, DP, DE, CPR1, again we are picking up DE, CPR2. In this way, many conductors are required, many power supplies are required in this type of feeding. That is local feeding indirect method what are the basic differences let us just analyze here requirement of re cutting in location box is not three if it is remote feed while it is required in a local feed ecr placement in remote feed is available in the relay room 
while it is uh, available at the location if it is local feeding. Requirement of trans requires here it is not required in the remote feeding and local feeding it is available required. Number of cable conductors are as you have seen in the two circuits is less in remote feeding while more in uh, local feeding. Bus bar supply extension to location box near signal. Here we don't require any bus bar to be taken from a relay room to the location. Everything is done remotely. That is why it's called remote feeding. While we require bus bar supply extension and availability at a local feed. Requirement of relays here is less, while here more relays are required. And where it is used? It is used, remote feeding is used in all station, wayside stations, signals except distant signals. While the local feed is used for all distant signals, automatic things or any signals which are above 2.8 kilometers. Similarly, going further, what is the direct feeding on double line? So, what are the distances that we have learnt now? We will just analyze it. Direct feeding on double line, 220 meters. Here, no question of relays because it is direct feeding. Direct feeding on single line is 180 meters. Indirect feeding on double line, that is remote feeding, is up to 2.8 kilometers. And the type of relays we use is QNA1 or QNA1K. Similarly, in single line remote feeding, it is 2.1 kilometers, and the relays used are similar QNA1 and QNA1K. Indirect feeding on double line, here local feeding with RE cuttings, if the distance is above 2.8 kilometers, then we use this type of uh, local feeding in with uh, indirect, uh, indirect method feeding. QNA1 and QNA1K, these relays have to be used in all the cases. While indirect feeding on single line, local feeding with RE cutting, again it is 2.1 kilometers. Now coming to the point operation. Point detection and point uh, detection repeat circuits. NWKRs, NWKPRs shall, be, shall use AC managed relays only. The maximum purposeful length of various types of common used point machines. I am talking about the general uh, as per IRSS 84. AC unit is 160. The, all the uh, point machines that we use have AC unit of 160 volts. We generally don't use this one. So in that way, the maximum permissible parallelism in meters between point contactor and locator and point motor. That is from the place where your uh, circuit is available, either in the relay room or in the location box, let it be any place. If the distance between that contactor unit or your circuit to the point machine on single line shall be 910 meters, while on double line it is 1100 one, meters around one kilometer more than one kilometer so in this way if your point machine is placed up to one kilometer from your relay room 1.1 kilometers you can feed directly if the distance is more you cannot use that point machine now why this 1.1 kilometers again you can see the calculation for double line it is again 95 volts per kilometer as we have known so our AC immunity as you have seen is 160 volts. So here we have seen AC, AC immunity level of our point machine is 160 volts. So if in that case it is 1.6 kilometers. Again factor of safety we have to take as 1.1, 1 point, as 1.5 means 1.1 kilometers which is 1100 meters that is the maximum distance. That is how we have got this 1100 meters. So, if any questions, please do give your comments. Thank you. Jai Hind.